When thou findest thee thyself seated solitary, enveloped in the tranquil surrounds, naught but the gentle whispers of the breeze, and thy thoughts echoing in thine ears, dost thou perceive this to be the very realm advocated by Stoic philosophy? Solitude is not mere seclusion, but a state, an experience wherein thou canst engage in dialogue with thy own innermost self, distanced from the clamor of the external world finding therein a sanctuary for introspection and self-reflection. Yet, for many, solitude is a concept both captivating and daunting. In our society, it is often adorned with negative connotations, deemed a signal of social rejection, an unwelcome state to be avoided. The continued cacophony of the digital age exacerbates this fear, as we remain tethered, forever embedded in a digital network of friends, influences, and trending topics. The notion of disconnection, of being alone, with only one's thoughts for company, seems alien, even terrifying. This fear of solitude, this dread of being alone, is what we term monophobia, more prevalent than thou mayst imagine. However, Stoic philosophy informs us that solitude does not inevitably bring forth negative emotions. On the contrary, it can serve as an opportunity for deep contemplation and self-exploration. Stoicism emphasizes inner tranquility and self-mastery, advocating acceptance of all aspects of life, whether good or bad, with a rational and calm attitude. In solitude, we have the chance to examine our inner world, delve into self-discovery, and glean strength and wisdom from it. Therefore, Solitude should not be regarded as a negative state, but rather as a beneficial opportunity for personal growth and cultivation of inner strength. This video will delve into the minds of some of the greatest thinkers, philosophers, and psychologists in human history who viewed solitude not as a condition to be cured, but as one to be celebrated. We will traverse the corridors of their thoughts, unravel the mysteries of their wisdom, and endeavor to understand their perspectives on solitude, starting with Friedrich Nietzsche. From Nietzsche's affirmation of the path to greatness, to Henry David Thoreau's embrace of a tranquil life by Walden Pond, from Kierkegaard's embrace of individuality, to Viktor Frankl's confrontation with existential isolation, from Jung's pursuit of individuation, to Jordan Peterson's insights into self-growth and resilience in solitude, each thinker offers a unique perspective that allows us to contemplate and understand the art of solitude. Before we embark on our journey of exploring solitude, let us first turn to one of the most influential philosophers of the 19th century, Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche, born in 1844, was a German philosopher who left a profound mark on Western philosophy. His radical ideas about morality, truth, and the concept of solitude are among the most important contributions to our discussion today. Nietzsche's philosophy is complex, filled with paradoxes and provocative assertions that challenge traditional thinking. At its core lies a critique of traditional values and a celebration of individuality, vitality, and creative self-affirmation. For Nietzsche, the affirmation of the individual self is the ultimate goal, and he believed that solitude is a crucial element in this journey. An important aspect of Nietzsche's philosophy directly relevant to our topic is his concept of the path to greatness. Nietzsche believed that to achieve greatness, individuals must have the courage to stand alone, away from the crowd and its conformist moral views. He regarded solitude as a vital condition for personal transformation and self-transcendence. Nietzsche believed that it is in solitude that individuals can confront the deepest questions of existence and muster the courage to become truly themselves. Consider Nietzsche's words, the individual has always had to struggle to keep from being overwhelmed by the tribe. If you try it, you will be lonely often, and sometimes frightened. But no price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself. Here, Nietzsche tells us that the journey to self-possession and greatness often involves periods of loneliness and solitude. It is not an easy path, but according to Nietzsche, the reward is the ultimate privilege of owning oneself. In another quote, Nietzsche distinguishes between solitude and isolation. 
This simple yet profound statement encapsulates Nyat's view of solitude as something distinct from loneliness. To Nyat, loneliness is a state of lack, a deprivation of others, whereas solitude is a state of fulfillment, a communion with oneself. It is in this solitary state that individuals can cultivate the strength and independence necessary for the path to greatness. From Nyat's perspective, the key point is that solitude is not a state to be feared, but one to be pursued. It is the crucible of self-transformation and the path to greatness. Therefore, if you find yourself alone, do not despair, embrace solitude, for it may be leading you towards the greatest version of yourself. Our exploration of solitude now takes us to 19th century Denmark, to the thoughts of a philosopher often referred to as the father of existentialism. Soren Kierkegaard, born in 1813, centered his work around individual existence, subjectivity, and the journey to true selfhood. His philosophy, much like Nietzsche's, emphasizes the importance of the individual, but it also introduces a unique dimension to our discussion of solitude. Kierkegaard's philosophy is characterized by an in-depth introspective exploration of the human condition. His works convey a profound understanding of the complexity of personality and the existential challenges faced by individuals. For Kierkegaard, the journey towards authenticity and self-understanding is crucial, and he recognized the pivotal role of solitude in this journey. For Kierkegaard, solitude is a vital element in the process of self-discovery and self-understanding. He believed that in solitude, individuals can confront the existential anxieties and despair that often accompany the journey towards true selfhood. It is through this confrontation that people can find the courage to choose their own path and take responsibility for their existence. He says, the crowd is untruth. Therefore, Christ was crucified because he spoke to everyone, but did not consort with the crowd because he did not allow the crowd to assist him in any way, because in this respect he absolutely pushed people away, did not establish parties, did not allow elections, but simply became who he was. Truth is related to the individual. Kierkegaard emphasizes the need for individuals to distance themselves from the crowd in order to realize their authenticity. To him, the crowd symbolizes unreality. According to his perspective, the path to truth lies not in the crowd, but in solitude, only in solitude can one truly connect with oneself. In another profound statement, Kierkegaard writes, the more a person is isolated from the world, the closer he is to himself. Here, he captures the essence of solitude as a path to self-discovery. He implies that isolation is not the cause of loneliness, but rather can foster a closer relationship with oneself, aiding in self-understanding and authenticity. So, what can we glean from Kierkegaard's perspective on solitude? That solitude is not merely a state of being alone, it is an existential condition conducive to self-exploration and self-understanding. It is a sanctuary where we confront our anxieties, wrestle with existential despair, and ultimately find our true selves. Now, let us transport ourselves to 19th century America, to the tranquil shores of Walden Pond, where we encounter someone who not only pondered solitude, but also experienced it firsthand, Henry David Thoreau. Born in 1817, Thoreau was an American philosopher, writer, and naturalist. His philosophy revolved around self-reliance, simplicity, and a profound reverence for nature. Thoreau not only theoretically explored solitude, he pursued it, experienced it firsthand, and shared his experiences and reflections in his most famous work. The Walden is Thoreau's record of his deliberate experiment in living. For two years, two months, and two days, Thoreau resided in a cabin he built himself near Walden Pond, far from the bustle of society. Immersed in solitude and simplicity, his aim was to live deeply and suck out all the marrow of life. Thoreau's experience at Walden Pond demonstrates the transformative power of solitude. 
In self-imposed isolation, Thoreau found a space for reflection, observation, contemplation, and writing. His experience underscores the value of solitude as a means of deeply engaging with one's thoughts and the natural world. Let's take a look at some quotes from Walden. Thoreau writes, I never found the companion that was so companionable as solitude. We are for the most part more lonely when we go abroad among men than when we stay in our chambers. In this passage, Thoreau expresses a profound appreciation for solitude, suggesting that true companionship lies not in the company of others, but in solitude. In another quote, Thoreau writes, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. This powerful statement encapsulates Thoreau's motivation for seeking solitude at Walden Pond, to live deliberately, authentically engage with the essential truths of life, and learn from the natural world. In his experiment at Walden Pond, Thoreau demonstrated the potency of solitude as a tool for self-exploration and self-transformation. His solitude was not a passive isolation but rather an active engagement with his thoughts, the surrounding environment, and his very being. He regarded his solitude as a mirror, reflecting upon his life, values, and place in the world. Thoreau's reflections offer a profound and practical perspective, inviting us to reconsider our relationship with solitude, challenging us to ask ourselves how we, like Thoreau, can embrace solitude as a companion and utilize it as a means of deeper engagement with our own existence. In the Chronicles of Walden Pond, solitude emerges not as a specter of fear but as a reservoir of strength, clarity, and insight. It serves as a catalyst for self-exploration and a tool for personal transformation, unlocking the gateway to a more authentic and purposeful existence. From Thoreau's perspective, solitude is the path to intentional living and genuine self-discovery, an opportunity to confront life's fundamental realities without the distractions of society, allowing one to commune with nature, ponder the mysteries of existence, and engage more deeply with one's own thoughts. Our philosophical voyage now carries us into the mid-20th century, where we encounter a figure who epitomizes resilience in the face of extreme adversity, Viktor Frankl. Born in 1905, Frankl was an Austrian psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor who developed a therapeutic approach known as logotherapy, grounded in the belief that human nature is driven by the search for meaning in life. His seminal work, Man's Search for Meaning, a memoir penned in the crucible of Nazi concentration camps, interweaves personal narrative with his therapeutic doctrine, showcasing his profound conviction in the power of finding meaning amidst the most dire circumstances. Solitude, as we are to explore, plays a pivotal role in the quest for meaning in life. According to Frankl, a sense of purpose is key to imbuing life with meaning. He posits that we can discover meaning through three avenues, by creating a work or accomplishing a deed, by experiencing something or encountering someone, and by our attitude towards unavoidable suffering. In this third mode of meaning-seeking, solitude becomes particularly salient. Amidst the isolation of the concentration camps, Frankl found solitude to be a catalyst for introspection and self-discovery. Despite the harsh conditions, he used solitude to reflect on his life, cherish precious memories, and mentally rehearse future reunions and conversations. These acts of mental resilience conducted in solitude helped him maintain a sense of purpose and hope. Reflecting on Frankl's words, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way, underscores his belief that even in the depths of despair, individuals retain the capacity to choose their response, to seek meaning, and to preserve dignity. As Viktor Frankl aptly expressed, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. This insight directly underscores the transformative potential of solitude. 
In moments of isolation, when external circumstances lie beyond our control, we are compelled to look inward, to reflect on our values, beliefs, and life's purpose. So, what can we learn from Frankel's perspective? His work demonstrates that solitude, even when imposed and painful, can serve as a space for introspection and personal growth. It can be a moment to reconnect with our deepest values, reaffirm our life's purpose, and strengthen our resolve. We learn that even in its most agonizing forms, solitude can be a crucible for self-transformation and a conduit for discovering meaning. His life and teachings remind us that even in our loneliest moments, the inner strength to shape our destiny, find purpose, and face life with courage and resilience resides within us. As we continue our exploration of solitude, we now journey back to 17th century France, where we encounter Blaise Pascal. His insights remain as relevant today as they were in his time. Pascal was a true polymath, contributing to mathematics, physics, and philosophy. A devout believer, his philosophical works are known for their deep exploration of human nature, morality, and faith. Pascal's reflections on this subject are famously encapsulated in his oft-quoted phrase, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. It's a bold statement, yet it reveals Pascal's views on solitude and the human condition. For Pascal, our discomfort with solitude, our continual need for diversion and distraction, are symptoms of our dissatisfaction with ourselves. We seek constant activity and companionship to avoid facing our own thoughts and emotions. According to Pascal, this inability to sit quietly in a room alone is the root of many human problems, leading us to make unwise decisions, act impulsively, and overly rely on others for happiness and self-esteem. Pascal's perspective invites us to reconsider our relationship with solitude. He suggests that if we can become comfortable with being alone, if we can learn to sit quietly in a room undisturbed, we can begin to address the conflicts within ourselves, gain a clearer understanding of who we are, and make more thoughtful decisions. Consider this passage from Pascal's Pensies. In reiterating his prior views, Pascal intertwines human unhappiness with our incapacity to endure solitude. For Pascal, the ability to be quietly alone is not just a skill but a pathway to self-understanding, contentment, and ultimately personal growth. From Pascal's perspective, solitude is not something to be avoided, but embraced. It is a space for introspection, self-discovery, and self-improvement, an opportunity to confront fears, challenge assumptions, and better understand our desires and motivations. As we delve further into the realm of psychology, we encounter Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who pioneered analytical psychology. Jung's work has had a profound impact on psychology, philosophy, anthropology, and even the arts, with his theories on the collective unconscious, archetypes, and the process of individuation continuing to shape our understanding of the human psyche. Central to Jung's psychological framework is the concept of individuation, the process by which the individual develops into their unique potentialities. It is a journey towards self-realization, a transformation that allows us to integrate conscious and unconscious elements and achieve wholeness. In this journey of transformation, solitude plays a crucial role. Jung believed that solitude provides the necessary space for introspection and self-reflection, two essential elements in the process of individuation. It is in solitude that we can confront our shadows, the unconscious parts of our personalities that we often deny or overlook. It is in solitude that we can commune with our inner world, exploring our thoughts, feelings, dreams, and unconscious elements. Consider Jung's statement, the most terrifying thing is to accept oneself completely. This statement underscores the challenges of the individuation process, a journey that requires us to confront and accept all parts of ourselves, even those we may prefer to deny or suppress. 
solitude provides the space for this challenging yet beneficial inner work. Jung also wrote, knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. This statement emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and self-understanding in our relationships with others. Through confronting our inner darkness in solitude, we are better able to understand and empathize with the struggles of others. Jung's concept of the shadow is particularly relevant to our exploration of solitude. In Jungian psychology, the shadow represents the unconscious aspects of the personality that the conscious self does not identify with. In other words, it is what we do not see or understand about ourselves. This shadow may include everything we repress, ignore, or overlook. In the tranquil solitude, we extend an invitation to our shadow into consciousness, allowing it to emerge from the dark corners of our psyche and acknowledging its existence. This is no easy feat, it requires courage, patience, and a willingness to confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves. Yet, it is a necessary step towards achieving a more complete and authentic self-understanding. Jung believed that until we make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our lives, what we call fate. By facing and integrating our shadows in solitude, we can master our destiny, transforming what was once unconscious into a conscious acknowledgement of our existence. In solitude, we also have the opportunity to interact with our dreams, another crucial aspect of Jungian theory. According to Jung, dreams are a way of communicating with our unconscious, providing symbolic expressions of our inner conflicts, desires, and potentials. In the silent embrace of solitude, we can reflect on our dreams, decipher their symbols, and gain profound insights into our unconscious selves. Lastly, let us ponder another insightful quote by Jung, for me, solitude is the fountain of healing which makes my life worth living. Here, Jung acknowledges the therapeutic potential of solitude. In solitude, we can tend to our psychological wounds, heal our fractured selves, and nurture a healthier, more balanced psyche. As we reflect on Jung's perspectives, we discover that solitude is not merely a state of being alone, it is a rich space for introspection, self-discovery, and personal growth. It is a sacred domain where we can commune with our unconscious, confront our shadows, and embark on the journey of individuation. Now, let us delve into the works of Jordan Peterson, a renowned Canadian psychologist and professor. Peterson is widely acclaimed for his profound insights into psychology, philosophy, and personal development. His ideas have resonated with many individuals seeking guidance in navigating the complexities of life. Jordan Peterson's philosophy highlights the importance of solitude as a key aspect. He recognizes that alone time is crucial for cultivating self-esteem, maintaining sanity, and developing psychological resilience. Peterson believes that solitude provides a necessary space for introspection and self-reflection, allowing individuals to gain deeper insight into themselves and their place in the world. In his book 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos, Peterson emphasizes the transformative power of solitude. He writes, if you don't know exactly where you are, you may be anywhere, you may be in chaos. It is out of this chaos that new existence emerges, but you have to relinquish what you have, perhaps even yourself, to allow this emergence. Peterson suggests that solitude enables individuals to detach from external disturbances, delve into the depths of their inner selves, and facilitate personal growth, emerging as stronger and more authentic selves. Peterson also explores the connection between solitude and mental health. He asserts that solitude is essential for maintaining sanity in a world filled with constant stimulation and noise. In his article The Necessity of Virtue, he points out that the development of character requires solitude. It is in solitude that the struggle against chaos unfolds and is conquered, allowing individuals to gather the strength and wisdom needed to face life's challenges. 
Peterson believes that through engaging with solitude, individuals can confront their fears and limitations, cultivating the inner resilience needed to navigate life's difficulties. According to Peterson's perspective, solitude can be actively used for self-growth and resilience by providing space for self-examination and personal transformation. In his book Maps of Meaning, The Architecture of Belief, he states, when you settle down and can tolerate your limited viewpoints and the terrifying uncertainty they bring with them, then you can be. Jordan Peterson's psychological theory emphasizes the importance of solitude for self-esteem, sanity, and psychological resilience. Through introspection, self-reflection, and facing one's limitations, individuals can find meaning, foster personal growth, and navigate life's complexities with greater resilience. By embracing solitude, individuals embark on a journey of transformation, gaining deeper understanding of the self and leading a more fulfilling existence. In conclusion, the exploration of Jordan Peterson's views on solitude leaves us with profound reflections. Each of us has a unique relationship with solitude, and through introspection and self-reflection, we can deepen our understanding of its transformative potential. As we navigate the complexities of life, let us remember the lessons learned from these philosophers and psychologists. Solitude is not a state to be feared or avoided, but a sanctuary for self-discovery, personal growth, and mental well-being. In moments of solitude's tranquility, we can confront inner conflicts, embrace our vulnerabilities, and forge a path to a more authentic, fulfilling life. Embracing solitude is an act of bravery, an affirmation of self-worth, and a belief in finding comfort and wisdom within. It is an opportunity to cultivate psychological and emotional health, to listen to the whispers of the soul, and to connect deeply with our existence. I encourage you, the audience, to take some time to reflect on your own relationship with solitude, how you understand and accept moments of solitude, whether you see them as opportunities for self-discovery and growth, and whether you are willing to embrace insights and wisdom from silence and introspection. Reflecting on these questions can help you cultivate a more meaningful and profound relationship with solitude, a radical act of self-care in a world filled with noise and distractions. This is an act of reclaiming your own time, space, and thoughts, as advocated by Stoic philosophy. It is an act of self-love and self-compassion, reflecting respect and care for the inner self. Embracing solitude allows you to listen to the voice within, honor your needs and desires, and move forward on a path aligned with your values and aspirations. As you embark on the journey of self-discovery, remember that solitude is not a sign of weakness or isolation, but a powerful tool for personal growth and empowerment, as emphasized by Stoic philosophy. Embrace the gift of solitude and let it guide you towards the path of self-discovery, self-acceptance, and self-actualization. May you see solitude as a friend, a companion accompanying you on your journey of self-discovery. May you find comfort, inspiration, and resilience within its depths, and may the wisdom of these philosophers and psychologists continue to guide you as you navigate the vast landscape of the self. In conclusion, let us reflect on the insights of Stoic philosophy regarding solitude. The Stoic school teaches us to embrace our inner selves and face external challenges with equanimity. Solitude is not a weakness, but an opportunity to unleash inner strength and wisdom. Through solitude, we can gain deeper understanding of ourselves and steadfastly pursue our innermost needs and values. Therefore, let us embrace solitude together and see it as a path to inner peace and personal growth. Finally, I encourage all viewers, if you find this article inspiring, please do not hesitate to share your praise. Like, comment, and share, so that more people can experience the power of this wisdom. Let us collectively spread the beauty of solitude and the importance of self-discovery through solitude. Thank you for watching and supporting.